Good morning, beautiful souls. Happy Friday. Tim Wilde's Friday Ascension update, and it's a beautiful, warm, but overcast morning in the south of England. And I'm going to be looking quite solidly at a subject that has been coming up again and again and again, and is at the, is at the core of what we are experiencing, which is spiritual sovereignty. Now, our spiritual sovereignty, again, or it, it never really stopped, although we, we feel like we've had a bit of a summer recess a little bit. Um, the, the question of spiritual so sovereignty, body autonomy, and all of the other fun things that are occurring on our ascension process at the moment. Now, we are <clears throat> always aware of what is occurring around us, whether we tune into the news and whether we actually allow ourselves to be part of that reality or not. And last night there was a, or yesterday, there was a particularly kind of like a, a very loud message that came from the 3D camp in the United States, delivered, delivered by people in positions of, of authority. Now, this is the same worldwide. It is particularly prominent in the United Kingdom, Australia and the United States. These always seem to be the, <clears throat> the, the places that, that, that bring forwards their, their kind of their constructions or their plans first. Now, I've spoken in some depth about this subject before and I'm going to use the same coded language that I used previously. So I never I'll never talk about the, a trigger word in my video because automatically you do. It's flagged up by the Facebook algorithms and the bots come to feast upon it. So I'm going to use the V word, the, just call it the V word, okay? And, and this, this is, but it's not about that. It's about the contract that, that we're being asked to make and the spiritual sovereignty. And over the next two, three or four months, we are going to really, really see this playing a part in our physical reality. OK, although we have chosen our pathway, our, the volume of light that we take in, we've signed our ascension contracts and we're here in our master selves, we do have to still manage the transitional process that we are part of. Now, this pressure from the 3D matrix is now beginning to mount. <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit of a tantrimonious beast kind of thrashing around, throwing kind of fire and brimstone and threats and, and, and kind of thou shalt obey in, in kind of various kind of roars and, and outbursts and this is exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing the the control matrix, the 3D matrix, really throw its toys out of the pram, okay? And, but all of this, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm using this language, but in actual fact, this is something which is also catalyzing a global wake up or a global situational awareness. And Yes, it does have the ability to very much affect our lives. It is directly affecting our lives. It's pressing our survival buttons. The, the, old, the old patterns that we have lived through and followed again and again over countless incarnations are now coming. This, this is the final life, lifetime. This, this is our master lifetime. This is what you and I and everybody else have incarnated for on Earth at this time. It's because it is, the, it is the end of this particular cycle, the end of the 3D cycle, the transition into the fifth dimensional cycle. So everything that previously existed at that frequency that we are choosing to elevate and ascend from is going to cease to exist if it is not resonant with the vibration that we've moved into. So here we are at this turnpike, this, this point where it forks off in the road and the 
matrix with which we were part of and that we participated in and that we woke up within and detached ourselves from is calling for everybody to continue its participation because it's planned for it to be that way it's planned meticulously for people to be kind of integrated <clears throat> into this system which is going to basically allow for no spiritual growth it's going to stay completely rooted in the the the, the ego mentality what it wishes to do is prevent that heart-centered activation that movement into heart-centered reality and to stay kind of behoven to a system which is in its in for all wants of better word it's inverted it's it's the it's the polar opposite of light it is in essence what we would regard as kind of a lower frequency a darker system so but it's the reason why we can see and feel this now and it is being pelted at us from all sides is because it's had to reveal itself in the light because the light has become so strong and so bright that it is now time if it if it doesn't act now it has no more time it has no more time to keep the foundations and the structure of the system as strong as it was because everyone's migrating away from it everyone has there, there is so Again, I'll use the numbers. If you've watched my videos previously before, you'll know that in 2008, I was given a very specific number by Archangel Michael. He said that 6 billion people would pass through the Ascension Gateway. Not all simultaneously. It will happen over a period of time. So by 2032, 6 billion people will have chosen the Ascension Pathway. How, why or when they do that is completely down to how they activate or they have chosen to activate on a soul level. So here, we're, really and truly, we are slap bang in the middle of this development, this rolling ball of, of waking up, detaching from the matrix, moving into our spiritual sovereignty. But we are being told very clearly by the powers that be and I say that in inverted commas, that we are not allowed to do that. We are, we are not allowed to leave the matrix. That is the wrong thing to do. And so I've, I've kind of consulted the, my, my teams in, 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 in the Intergalactic Council, the Angelics, and what I've noticed at this particular moment in time as typically they are standing back they are looking at all of us you me everybody else on this ascension pathway at this and, and i'm talking about the now moment as you're listening to this they're looking to us for our reactions and the decisions that we make on a spiritual level because we've stepped into our power or we are stepping into our power we're stepping into our sovereignty our spiritual authority and all of a sudden having made these decisions for ourselves we're now faced with something which is saying you can't do that you must contract with 3d in order to continue your comfy little existence or whatever whatever way they are presenting it you will not be allowed to do this unless you contract you will not be allowed to do that unless you contract you in actual fact will have very limited power of movement or anything else but herein lies, herein actually lies the test itself, okay? Because that system has no power in the light. It only exists at a third dimensional frequency. Now, I, right from the start, have always said that if people are choosing, and if you are listening to this and you have chosen to take whatever med medical intervention is on offer as long as that decision has been made from a point of heart-centered sovereignty <clears throat> and it wasn't made in fear then it was the right decision for you it's never been about don't do this or don't do that or this is the wrong thing to do and this is the right thing to do everybody on this ascension pathway at all levels of learning and knowledge 
are the, the, the only thing that we are truly required to do of ourselves to present is what we feel is the right thing for us at that particular moment in time. So there is no wrong decision. Okay, there is no, there is, and, and there is no decision that is better than another decision. But there have to be, you have to look at the energy and the dynamics of why, okay, and what, what is being presented at the moment. So this is coming up very strongly, and this is going to be coming up very strongly over the next few months. Is the pressure, or this, the, the beast, in the, you know, I, I, I just see it as kind of like this, this kind of thrashing, angry sort of, <laughs> it's it, presented almost like comically, but not, you know, like kind of standing back from it, watching it going, oh, you know, like we're, we're getting cross now, aren't we? At, at, the, at, the, at the kind of like the energy of the 3D matrix, because so many people are unplugging from it. Now, as I said in my previous videos, when people unplug, the power goes down, okay? It's like all of these different, if, if you imagine a huge control board or a control panel with billions of people plugged into it, and all of a sudden hundreds and thousands of people are unplugging from it, and every time they do, the, the, the quantity of power that feeds that particular switchboard drops. So they are really feeling it now. They're feeling all of these people, all of us, detaching from the 3D matrix, and, and and the whole thing is it's it's causing pandemonium. Every single trick in the book is being now pulled out to maintain the integrity of what they were holding on to. But there's also a very interesting point which has been been made to me by the Intergalactic Council, the Board of Karma, is the reason why they're clinging on to it so tightly, even though the time is up now, is because the majority of them that have been in power since the fall of Atlantis are very frightened of the repercussions of what they have been doing for the last 10,000 years. I mentioned that on, eight, on July the 27th about Archangel Gabriel bringing down the hammer of light and boy did we feel it. Yes, the hammer of light has come down and it is still coming down because laws of 3D engagement have been broken by the 3D matrix and now stepping over lines in the sand that even they had drawn for themselves to main, maintain control. Because the thought of losing control, the thought of losing power, is so frightening to these people that they will do almost anything to maintain it. Not just to maintain the power, but because once, the, once everything has taken an evolution into a higher form, there then has to be the karmic payback for years of working on a on on an ego based level so we're, we're dealing with a huge amount of fear based control now this this is this is what i want to look at we are now being asked or coerced in many ways to contract with that 3d control we're being asked to do that and and being told that if we don't then life as we know it, or life that is comfortable for us, will cease to exist. And so that then calls upon you and me and everybody else in our spiritual community to ask that question. What is spiritual sovereignty if you are basically complying with directives or orders from a group of souls and believe me they're not there aren't that many of them they just have a huge amount of money and a huge amount of power and a lot of people working for them but the interesting part about it is the people working for them are waking up now the 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 you heard me talking in the previous video about the walk-ins that are coming in what i want to express what what was been what is the theme that i'm getting from the guidance that i'm receiving is that we the the the, in, the spiritual interceding that we are receiving, or the assistance that we're receiving from the heavens, is incredibly powerful. Make no doubt about it. They are here, they are amongst us, they are supporting us, they are absolutely everywhere. But there is something very important that you and I have got to do at the moment, which is take responsibility. 
they are here waiting for the people on the ascension pathway or the people who are just about to step onto the ascension pathway to take power okay to claim power to claim sovereignty so the decisions that we're making based with the information and the situations and the circumstances that we're making at the moment are all important they are all they, they are all encompassing for the next stage a little bit like walking into an examination room and you know what you've got to do you know what is expected of you you know that it could be challenging it's going to be hard otherwise it wouldn't be an examination or it wouldn't be a test in the first place all eyes are upon you for the decisions that you make in that moment the choices that and and the actions that you take and the choices that you are making under pressure and so that is that is what i'm being told very clearly help assistance intervention and guidance is available but we've got to be completely rooted and completely firm and completely unshakable in the way that we are proceeding at the moment and again i feel like i'm kind of covering ground that i've been talking about in you know in, in various different videos over the car past 18 months or so because we knew this point was coming we knew that it was going to at some point come to a kind of like a, cres a crescendo a crescendo of control <laughs> and, uh, and how we respond within that very pressurized scenario is what is going to be the foundation of the golden era that we're moving into now there is never i don't think a situation where a human being a master in human form you me all of the other people living on this planet will ever make a choice that goes against our sovereignty once we've made <laughs> once we've embodied that higher self aspect of us we are our higher selves we might not feel like it we might spend most of our days sort of kind of staggering around kind of like or if, you, if you're anything like me like you know where's my keys where's my phone you know what am i what am i doing you know thinking about very about just about about as million a million miles away from an ascended master as you could possibly be but energetically here you are on planet earth doing this job and every action that you take to better this world has the most incredible explosive energetic effect and again it it could it's not only are we being asked to show how committed to that sovereignty that we are we're also being asked to show how committed that we are to working as a unit as a team although we have all connected with each other around the world and we've got a very strong support network spiritually that's the beauty of social media i mean sort of facebook is being used for kind of many things which aren't good but it is also the, the one thing that it has done is create the most incredible network of of souls connected to each other all around the world okay so what we are now looking to do is act upon the unity that we have found with each other and build solid communities of support and light for each other, particularly over the next coming months. The, because the way it feels, it feels a little bit kind of scattered or a little bit kind of almost what we describe as discombobulated to me at the moment. We've all got the right intentions. We've all got the right focus. We all know that we've got to do we're a little bit distracted we're a little bit like where do we start where what what do we do how do we go about this and i believe that when the time is right when we know that we have got we, when we've got to do something we simply act upon the guidance of where we're supposed to be what we're supposed to be doing and what the actions that we take at that particular moment in time so it's almost like we're waiting for our cues we're waiting for the 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 situation to present itself and then we we move into it with our hearts but 
this unity and this getting organized is something which I think is going to be a big theme over the winter okay when once we move into the into the northern hemisphere up it up in the uk we're going to be we're going to be kind of called upon as sort of like how do we pull our resources together how do we pull our energy together how do we we're very used to working as individuals and in small groups at the moment but there's going to come a point quite soon where we're going to need to be unified on a on a on a larger level and i think that that that's going to be that's going to be very interesting when we're starting because that's what the golden blue that's what the gold print the, the atlantean community gold print is all about it's not about little pockets of people scattered all over the world it's about a much larger more organized community that's unified in its heart-centered consciousness and that has the ability to work together for the betterment of the planet and also for the betterment of all of us experiencing this incredible transition worldwide. So it's interesting. It's the, the from a from a from a working standpoint, from a perspective, from a from a spiritual perspective, this is a very challenging, unique, but extremely interesting time to be in. But I'll kind of I've I'll kind of come back to my original point. The question of our individual sovereignty which is being presented at the moment because it is going to be everybody is feeling it I've seen it repeatedly in messages that have been sent to me I've seen it repeatedly in the threads of comments on Facebook posts everybody is very worried about this pressure that is being applied from three from the three from the three D matrix to comply with what what they're asking us to do, stand firm, stand strong in your beliefs, stand strong in your sovereignty. Do not cross any lines that you have drawn for yourself, or for your family, or for your children, under any circumstances, because again, this or it feels to me, and I'm 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 reading the energy very clearly. The thrashings of this this kind of like the uh, the angry energy within the 3D matrix only has words. It doesn't have power. Okay, what we have is power because we have sovereignty and we have the common laws of the land and charters that have been drawn up over the past century or maybe even the past two centuries that give us our sovereign rights as human beings to live our lives as we choose to mandate for ourselves. And this is what is going to be coming up again and again and again. And what I've shown very clearly, I mean, this, we're talking years ago, before this, long before this all started, was that the entire ascension process on a much more physical level would be sealed so it would be signed sealed and done on a 5d frequency by adhering to the common laws and rights of human beings in physical never forget what you actually are you are a human being in physical which means when you incarnated here you agreed to live that physical life in honor of your body if anything outside of that is asking you not to honour your body, it is not acting under spiritual law. It is not acting under the actual foundations of the law of one. And the law of one is what actually completely governs this particular planet. There's, there's individual rules and setups for societies, okay? And, but many of those particular rules and laws have been written recently by the people that I was talking about who have been running the show since the fall of Atlantis. So they've overridden the laws of sovereignty. They've overridden the laws, the natural laws, the common laws. And this is what we're going back to, okay? Very clearly, we take the stand standing in the physical, mental, emotional and spiritual rights that we have as human beings. It's going to be it's going to be big it's going to be interesting and we're going to be continuously called to go within search within our heart for the answers 
but also look to the support unit and the networks that we together as an Ascension and the light community globally are forming. And so yeah, I think that is, that is the note that I'm going to finish my ponderings on this morning. And I'm wishing you all the most beautiful weekend. It's, I'll be back on Monday with a walking meditation and on Tuesday I'm going to be working with the Seraphim and Lady Gaia to do some some serious earth work okay it's all it's on one side it's great to dissect what's going on on a physical level but when you start adding light to that physicality which we're going to do in abundance on Tuesday night that's when things start getting very interesting as well sending you loads and loads of love wishing you the most beautiful weekend and I'll be back on Monday morning bye for now